social housing with the rich areas. We believe that this is true for so many reasons, but first, let us get into the definitions. Social housing uh, is, is an act of creating a housing for low-income people who cannot otherwise afford it. And then high wealth areas uh, are areas where majority is wealthier um, and, uh, from, and they have the national average and live ab above uh, poverty. Okay, uh, so for the framing on our side of the house, we believe that social housing must be uh, anywhere within the nation. So the proposition is in favor of having social housing in all areas, but we do not see why high value areas, uh, why high value areas should be excluded. Okay, so for the model, uh, the national government would buy underutilized land uh, or under underutilized property and build upon it in cheap housing. Uh, and to provide it to uh, improvise or to uh, give the opportunity for people um, and or give them free or discount uh, houses um, in the basis of their needs. Uh, okay, so in this uh, debate, proposition must prove that housing um, in high high wealth areas uh, is net positive uh, to society, but opposition. Uh, does the opposite. Okay, uh, now for my arguments. Uh, so the first argument would be, uh, why exclude high wealth? Well, the answer to this is that there is no reason. Um, rich areas have a significant amount of land. Um, and so limiting our options um, only in middle or low income areas uh, would be significantly bad. And we believe that it is possible to provide social housing uh, in low income areas, but we think it is uh, preferable uh, to do so in high wealthy areas. Uh, this is also because it increases load on other, uh, on and economical distress uh, if we do so on uh, low income land. Uh, since poor areas are uh, dealing with issues as is, adding more social housing would simply add issues to that. Um, and that is why, again, we think that high income areas should not be uh, excluded. And this will be expanded on the second argument. Um, how including, so for the second argument, including wealthy areas uh, will increase uh, class collaboration. This is for two main reasons. Number one, increase how often poor and wealthy, uh, the poor and the wealthy understand each other. Uh, and it would importantly reduce personal animosity between the poor and the rich. Create better comprehension and make uh, each other see each other as uh, humans. The rich won't think so low of the poor, uh, and then again, the poor would not resent the rich. Separating them could potentially trap the poor in a sort of cycle um, of poverty as they are only surrounded um, by crime and poverty, etc. Um, so giving an example of France that uh, brought immigrants and put them in a low income area, uh, which created a non-ending loop of, of poverty, um, and it significantly increased crime rates within that area. Uh, so with that being said, this, uh, this, uh, in this, the world that opposition wants is a world where it is nearly impossible to break that uh, cycle or that poverty uh, loop. And so for our side, for proposition side, we believe that um, if we, uh, let, um, if we uh, do the opposite, then um, it would be beneficial for, again, both sides. Um, okay, now I would like to uh, give some preemptions and uh, I think that opposition, uh, while developing their case, would probably do it in two ways. Number one, are you against social housing uh, in rich uh, areas specifically? Um, and that would be uh, in the first argument, and we have already talked about that in the first argument. And then a quick reminder of our first argument, which is uh, how social housing must not be isolated from wealth wealthy areas. Um, and then they would also argue against social housing as a whole. Um, and the way we would, uh, we would respond to that is a defense of social housing um, in a, as, as, a, as a concept. So example of Finland that uh, gave free homes to all of its homeless populations, 
um, this worked in two ways. Number one, uh, how giving the house uh, to the to the homeless um, improved the quality of life of, it, of its citizens. So once Finland gave homes, it improved the quality of life and it improved the way people started living um, when they added the homes to the uh, rich areas. And then two, uh, it was cheaper to pay for houses than, than it is to pay for hospital bills and, uh, and prisons. So once you take, um, you take this opportunity and put the low income people with the high income people, um, you can notice how it's, you break again that cycle um, and they start interacting with people that uh, have less crime and less poverty and more peace relatively. Um, and so uh, it is cheaper and it's economically uh, good to, uh, to do so as it is, um, yeah. So it's, it's better, uh, it's cheaper, and it increases the quality uh, of life. That is our solution. Team position as soon as you're ready.
which people are educated uh, to uh, make empathy with these people. They can be ashamed there. They ashamed these people like, oh, you're living in there because uh, the government give you this house that you not you're not um, like you're not deserve this house. You're just sitting in there with the uh, paying low low money uh, compared to us. So this will be like a un, uh, peaceful environment for both sides. In our work, we are supporting the idea of uh, putting them in a uh, people who have time who have same same problems. So this will be more uh, peaceful p uh, environment for both sides. Um, like proposition may say we are gonna categorize uh, their by their financial standards is gonna exclude these people in place. But uh, as I said before, we are uh, thinking their own uh, own good. We are thinking their um, uh, we are thinking their um, like uh, we are thinking their um, problems. Okay, we are gonna. Um, not, uh, we're not gonna be uh, able to the other uh, people uh, excluded there in in the environment in that environment. So they're not gonna be ex uh, excluded with these uh, reasons. So that's about all of my speech. Thank you. speaker of proposition, my job here is threefold. First, I must provide rebuttal to what opposition has said. Second, I must provide some rebuilding of what my own partner has said. And thirdly, I must present the uh, our team's third argument. Um, so to start off, it was incredibly difficult to tell from prop, uh, opposition what um, is, how they specifically demarcated their points. However, there are some uh, statements that we have seized upon that we believe it is important to emphasize and emphasize why they are logically unsound. First of all, they mentioned that social housing would put poor people, uh, social housing in richer areas would put poor people in places where they cannot afford food. Here's the thing. The, one of the highest expenses, in fact, the highest expense in the modern world for a large portion of people is housing. Right? Um, in general, it is recommended uh, by the United States government that a person spend no more than 30% of their uh, income on their housing, either rent or a mortgage. Now, the problem is that there are many places in which people cannot do that, in which people are forced to spend 50%, 60%, 70% in some cases on housing, or they cannot afford housing whatsoever and must choose to, uh, to live on the streets or in their car or couch surf. All of these are are examples of why social housing matters in general, but it's also an argument for why social housing gives people more money to spend. If social housing is created in such a way, in such a way that people are able to spend only 30% of their income, or even are able to spend none of their income on housing, then suddenly we have taken a situation in which social housing is uh, in, in which uh, people cannot afford food, as you have say, uh, stated. But that's not what uh, this, uh, the reality of the situation, because the true reality of the situation is that people have more disposable income because less of it is going to their own housing, right? And so because they have so much more disposable income, they can in fact afford food. They could even afford more expensive food because they have so much more money to uh, spend. Now. Um, you have mentioned a few times that it is better to keep people with um, others of similar socioeconomic status. That is to say, it is better to keep poor people in poorer areas and rich people in richer areas. Our second argument has already um, strongly discredited this, and we will get back to that. But in general, it is better to have diversity within a, uh, an area because diversity increases, uh, decreases the amount of bigotry that exists it decreases the amount of classism that might exist, and also because poor people who are in rich areas have better opportunities. How, how do I say this? Why do I say this? Well, one thing that we can say right off the bat is that there are uh, more job opportunities in richer areas. That's part of why uh, richer areas become so much richer. So 
a poor person stuck in a poor area might be stuck with a minimum wage job, a minimum wage job that, as mentioned before, might uh, force them to pay 50% of their uh, income towards um, housing. But in richer areas, they might, uh, they are more able to look to more jobs, to be uh, better jobs. There are also less crime in um, richer areas. And so um, taking, uh, and so creating social housing within rich areas isolates people from the effects of this crime. Yeah. So you're saying if we do social housing in high wage areas, the poor people will afford their like stuff easily? Um, to, uh, yes, I am. And I will explain exactly why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because they will have more discretionary, uh, a greater discretionary budget. If they don't have to spend as much on housing, they have more to spend on other needs. And so yes, they would be able to spend more, even if the area is somewhat richer, even if the supermarkets are somewhat more expensive than what they would be in a poor area. Now, um, you've also mentioned that it's more peaceful in, in keeping people uh, isolated, which could not be further from the truth. Um, as mentioned in our example from the last speech, in the instance where France isolated people, uh, isolated immigrant populations within a certain a specific poor segments of the country, crime was rampant. Right? But that's not because criminal um, immigrants are criminals. It's because they were in a situation where they were trapped in poverty. And so they, weren't, they didn't have access to good jobs. They didn't have uh, safety from other crime. And so, naturally, they ended up having to satisfy their needs through crime. Now, I want to move on and give a brief um, strengthening of, my, uh, of the other proposition arguments. First of all, our first argument is one that we've already addressed. Uh, I've already addressed somewhat in this rebuttal, and that is why, um, uh, and that is that our first argument was that there is no reason to isol uh, to only build um, social housing within low and middle income areas, and this rem uh, remains true. In fact, it is strengthened by what I have uh, said here today. By isolating people within poor areas, you isolate them within areas more riddled with crime, area with uh, areas with more drugs, areas with fewer job opportunities, and so you prevent you make it so much more difficult to climb the social ladder. But if you, put, uh, but if you allow for social housing within well-developed areas, within rich areas, you increase this possibility for um, economic mobility because there is so much more opportunity, because there is so much less crime. Now, our second argument is very related in that it is about um, how keeping people trapped in poor areas uh, means that the rich and the poor don't get to interact. And so people harbor resentments. Poor people trapped in poor areas harbor resentments for rich people, and the rich do not understand the poor people because they have never experienced them. They've never met them, or they've only met one of them. But by building social housing um, within rich areas, you increase these personal connections, and so this degree of class antagonism is reduced. Yes? So you say that, like, not every rich people uh, are educated and they're gonna mobbing them because they're poor. Are you supporting that idea? Um, I am not, of course, naturally not supporting any idea of bigotry. In fact, my argument comes from a place of preventing classism, right? Rich people shouldn't feel that way about poor people, but they do. Why do they feel that way about poor people? Because they don't experience poor people. They don't meet poor people or when they do, it is only as homeless people on the street, and so they don't get to engage with the humanity of the poor. Now, I will move on now to the, uh, our prop, uh, prop, uh, proposition's third major argument. It's, it, it builds on this second argument, and that's that by reducing class antagonism, we reduce racial antagonism. Why is this? Now, the nap it is a fact of the world that in a large number of countries, racial minorities tend to be poorer than racial majorities. The reason for this is because of long-standing historical discrimination against these racial minorities. And I'm gonna give a specific example, and that is slavery in the United States, which um, robbed the black people in the US of the value of their labor. By doing so, it uh, robbed them of their ability to build generational wealth, and today the average black person is poorer than the average white person as a result. By increasing social housing in well-off areas, part of that would involve, uh, would result in Rich, uh, in um, black people coming to live within more developed and statistically whiter areas because white areas in the US are statistically more white. And so the result is that racism within white minds is significantly decreased. 
um, in the same way that diversity within cities leads to less racism in the city population. Thank you very much. For that.
so. And if, like, like I said, government is just going to give them houses, and the poor people may like go like, why doesn't government care about me? Why like, okay, I'm a poor person, so why does rich people lose like bullying me? So this may go to the, like depression, even suicide. So poor people may think like very alone because rich people basically doesn't understand them. So no, I can take your POIs. POI. Do you believe that poor people should remain in poverty in perpetuity? And if you do not, why then do you argue that social housing should only be built in such a way that it keeps them in poor areas? Uh, I'm not trying to say this like social housing just being the like um, rich places or just in the poor places. Like I said before, um, poor people may people, poor people should be able to see the other world. I mean, rich people's world. So. Like I said, they can adapt to their world, and they can live peacefully there. You are. It is evident that poverty encourages crime, encourages every single bad thing that we might interpret in society. How can you say that keeping poor people between each other uh, somehow induces tranquility in a way? Okay, I'm guessing you guys are thinking that poor um, places like, or Excuse me. Um, Low-wasted places are like has more crimes than the other uh, side of the world. So I really don't um, believe this because you know it, they're just for uh, low-wasted places. It's not like where every like murderer lives there. So that's all my speech. Thank you for listening. In three, two, one. Today, opposition needs to prove one of two things. Either how establishing social housing with the rich is bad, or how social, social housing as a whole is a negative thing. And in failing to do either one, and failing to either, even respond to the prompts that have already lost this debate, what I'm going to be doing today is going through everything that has been said until now showing you why there has been no substantial arguments put forth and why we we obviously have the much stronger case stronger case so my mate proposition one has spoken about how how having social housing in you know excluding it from rich areas and only and only allowing it in poor areas increases load a poor area already suffers enough adding more people to it is just going to make it worse second thing that she has said is how it increases, it, it decreases social tranquility and increases social tensions. By keeping poor people between each other, crime does, does worsen. None of these two arguments were brought up by neither one of opposition speakers. Then opposition one came up and spoke about how we need to keep poor people in a cool environment, somehow, somehow saying that keeping poor people between each other is making it cool and that it should People should only live in a place where they should be familiar with each other. But truth is, how can you expect poor people to stop being poor if they never interact with the rich, if they never learn from them? If you keep poor people between each other, you're creating a loop, a negative loop, which more, more poverty leads to more crime, more crime to more poverty, etc., etc., which is a very bad loop that, we, that in our world we try to avoid as a society. Then, first opposition speaker has spoken about how we should keep obvious the, the low standard of living with the low standard of living and the high with the high. But the whole purpose of social housing is to improve these, these, these conditions. If somebody was to be given social housing, it's because they need it, because the quality of life is horrible. And saying that we should keep them in the same environment 
it, it, it does not make sense and it goes against the whole purpose of it. Uh, then, second prop came up and spoken, and has, has spoken about how rich people, I mean, living with, if you get social housing, you have more disposable income, so even if the price of the groceries, of water, of electricity is gonna be more expensive, as a whole, you are gonna have more money to spend, so it's not gonna be an issue. Second thing, he has spoken about how, about, about, about how like, again, as I'm doing, how mixing the poor with the poor is not a good thing, and how it is a way to climb the social ladder. For example, say you are a very poor person, and you live in a rich neighborhood, suddenly you have so many job opportunities, you have all of these houses where you can be made, where you can be chauffeur, etc., etc. If you were in a poor neighborhood, you have none of these opportunities. Obviously, this is just an example that I'm sure opposition will try to attack, but it's one example out of many, many, many. Job opportunities are endless, while if you are in a poor neighborhood, poor neighborhood is poor because people do not have any opportunities to grow. Now, I'm gonna talk about what, what I'm gonna be, uh, that now I'm gonna talk about what Opposition 2 has said. Opposition 2 has, has spoken about, it, it, opposition, uh, opposition 2's whole argument was based upon one assumption which is false, and that is that the poor, poor people cannot adapt to higher levels of society. But that's not true, they can adapt, they just need time, and they just need, you know, support because what you do when you mix the poor with the, with the rich you create short-term frustration which is true we do not deny that but in long term we see a net positive in society also a point has been mentioned that only giving a house is not going to do much yes it will second second prop has, has mentioned has has proven why the house, a house alone can represent up to 50% of the expenses in a poor household. And getting rid of that 50% suddenly liberates so much, a, a big chunk of the income to be, to be invested elsewhere, which is a huge thing. Also, um, um, second, second, props, second off speaker has spoken about um, um, how, how, how the mother of the president and how she was psychologically not good. This debate is not about offering or not offering psychological help and support. It is about offering social housing to the people who need it. Again, completely avoiding the front and not responding to our arguments. Next, poverty induces ignorance. And so to, to say that all oh, poor people will never learn from their mistake and they cannot adapt is a dumb, is, is, a, is a statement that will not be accurate. As again, poverty induces ignorance. That is why if you, uh, that, that is why a, a lot of rich people look down on the poor ones saying, oh, they're, they're poor because they are stupid. No, they are stupid because they are poor. It goes the other way. Lastly, again, as a, as I, as a, la, lastly, the last point that I would like to mention is that um, um, second off has spoken about how poorer people do not do more crime, but that's completely false. Poor people do more crimes Crime is, for some people, a necessity. You do not go and rob a, a, a loaf of bread because you like bread. No, it's because you are hungry, you have nothing to eat, and your family is starving at home. Robbing is a way for people to survive. And by removing that need to survive, by fulfilling those needs, you remove the need to rob. So, to summarize, to, to conclude, what happened in this debate until now has been a proposition side that has put forth very solid, very strong arguments, and an opposition side that has completely ignored those arguments, that has engaged in a parallel, in a parallel debate, and that has made some very false assumptions, such as poor people cannot adapt, poor people do not rob more, and poor people want to want to stay in that poor environment and do not want to, you know, evolve. And that is all I have to say. Thanks a lot.
three, two, one. Hello, I'm the reply speaker of the opposition team, and I'm also the second speaker of the opposition team. And I'm going to um, tell the judges how did this match went and how uh, my teammates thought and the opposite um, team thought about this match. So we were trying to explain how um, poor people will, will live um, more like peacefully where they belong. So we said they are belong, they belong to the uh, places with low weight, but they thought like we are um, going to isolate people. And they said um, racism should like, racism should go lower uh, if we do social housing. And they said economic, um, economic problems are going to solve too. And we explained that that's not going to work because uh, government is just going to give the houses, not the money. And um, as also as second speaker, I gave example uh, from a real crime and I'm Uber. And I explained how this isn't going to work um, if the poor people doesn't like back their um, psychology up and the opposite team said, no, it's not about psychology, but I explained it is. And they tried to, um, they tried to rebuttal us, but we already said everything we need to say. And they still believe that we are trying to isolate people but we officially not, we explained this many times, but they, they were still um, believing that we are going to isolate people. And, um, and we, like, from the beginning of the match, match, we didn't say poor people should stay in poor places. We said they should uh, live there and then go move to the other, uh, like, rich places. But they played this match as like we are saying poor people should stay in poor places, but we didn't. So, and um, they said they need time. And we also said that, we explained that, but they still didn't believe that we are not trying to isolate people. They just kept seeing, uh, saying this. So, um, they say they are stupid because they are poor, poor, and we are saying they are uh, not smart because they are rich. Like we said, not all rich people are educated, and some people's uh, money, some people's richness is coming from their uh, fathers, grandfathers, or other their like uh, relatives. So we uh, explain the difference between these two words, but they just kept. Uh, saying that we are isolating people. That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. Three, two, one. I'm going to start my reply speech by discussing what proposition and opposition agree on. And that is that we are trying to come up with a solution that would help the poor, right? This is not a debate in which either side is arguing that the poor are undeserving, and neither side is arguing against social, ho social housing as a concept, as a whole. The question, the main point of clash, is should social housing be built in poorer areas or in richer areas? We have quite definitively proven that social housing is preferable in richer areas. Of course, we do not believe that social housing should be exclusive to richer areas. That was never our argument. But it is our belief that social housing is preferable within richer areas. Now, let's get into some of the key points of clash. Are poorer people happier when they are surrounded by other poorer people? It is conceivable that they might be somewhat happier to be surrounded by people of a similar cultural group. However, it must be stated that for the most part, poor people don't enjoy being poor. And so the result is that whether or not they enjoy staying in those areas, the ultimate goal is to reduce poverty. And I believe that everybody in this room can agree that that is the ultimate goal of this debate. So you mentioned, you in your reply said 
that you are not arguing in favor of isolation. And we don't believe that you are arguing explicitly for isolation within poor areas. But the impact of your argument is the isolation of poor people within poorer areas. Why is this? This is because if poor, this social housing is only built within poor areas, then the people who benefit from the social housing would remain in those poor areas. And the problems within those poor areas are numerous, as I will get to in just one moment. However, if they are placed within richer areas, there is more of the benefits that come about from interpersonal connection because antagonism between the classes reduces. Now, um, on the argument of personal economics, this is one of the strongest points of clash. Opposition has dogmatically stated multiple times that um, rich areas are more expensive to live in. And that is true when you factor in housing. But we are talking about social housing within the rich areas. You cannot consider housing within the, calcul the calculation of um, uh, price of life. And as mentioned, many people, many poor people, end up spending significantly more than would be economically advisable on housing because they have no other choice, because housing is so expensive and they are so poor. So by um, having this uh, having this ability to live in richer areas and to not have to rely on the cost of, uh, of the housing, their um, discretionary budget goes significantly up because they're no longer paying for their greatest financial burden. Now, let's talk specifically about crime because that is the last major point of clash. Crime in poor areas. I do not believe that the poor are inherently criminal. That is not a statement of truth, but it is a statement of truth that poverty incentivizes crime. And the reason for that is desperation. A person who is about to starve is obviously more likely to steal food than a rich person. And by e and the economic benefits to the poor that come about from um, social housing, especially within ri uh, rich areas, is incredibly beneficial in that it reduces that desperation and therefore reduces that crime and removes them from areas prone to crime. Thank you very much. Wow, that was an amazing debate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have to remove the outside for this session. Thank you so much. Um, can I ask a procedural question? In this case, would you fill out one single ballot?